Instead, they stayed sort of true to their intellectual capabilities. They designed large-scale systems, large-scale machines, which uh, when you go back and forth with those kinds of export goods, you make much more than you would making pennies on the dollar for these smaller manufactured goods. So I like this story because India is taking a directly, India is taking a very decisively different path from China about approaching its manufacturing sector. And it's following more along the lines of Japan uh, and Germany in hopes of emulating them some more. India has largely skipped the first step and gone straight to producing capital intensive items that require skilled workers, but not necessarily many of them uh, doing low skilled labor. So, you know, they just signed a uh, economic and business agreement with Japan. So Japan is now going to come to India, and you're right. They want these sophisticated equipment, and they're going to get to make it. I think this is good for India because it, it gives a place, a target for those young graduates out of engineering school to stay in the country and not just leave the country and seek, you know, a better life somewhere else. That's right. <laughs> Moving on, folks, I want to talk about Ordinary students here in this country can get a much better education if they actually go to England or Canada or Australia and locations like that. Why do I say that? First of all, good colleges up here cost about 50000 a year. The in, cost of in Great Britain, Canada, Australia, it costs you $30,000. That includes... That includes the living arrangements, because up there, colleges and others are subsidized by the country, you know, the good colleges. In four years, going into Great Britain, you can get an MA, whereas up here, in four years, you can only get undergraduate. So master's degree in four years, why would you not go to the other country? I think you will. I think you're going to start to see patterns shift the other way. In fact, they're already shifting. You hear all the time about how enrollment in Indian colleges, IITs and IIM, these institutions that have gotten worldwide acclaim now, they have a lot of international applicants That's for this right. reason. Because it's so much cheaper to get a good education uh, you know, in places like India and in China. That's true. I mean, particularly in Europe, they're so closely aligned culturally even with the American public, and they read the same subjects and so on and so forth. And, of course, as usual, in college, you get a multitude of subjects. You can choose yours. So master's in four years, $30,000 a year, and it's so exotic when you go for an interview, you say, Oh, I did it from London School of Economics. You know, I agree. It just uh, sounds it, great. It becomes a differentiator. And in these days, with the job market as tight as it is, anything you can use to differentiate yourself is a positive. Interesting phenomena that's happening in India. You know, when we think of the cyclewalas of Mumbai, what do you think of? You think of like a horde of people on bicycles getting to and from work because that's what most people have is a bicycle as their primary transportation. But not... This article, this article is talking about actual bikers in Mumbai, people who cycle for recreation, right? Exercise. Not exercise. And, and in India, it's an alien concept to want to ride a bicycle for recreation. <laughs> but it's taking off because there are so many executives, middle managers, uh, people with money now who realize exercise is important. Yeah. But the problem in Mumbai and in other cities is they're not set up for cycling. We don't have bike lanes in India and, and in other cities. And so these cyclewalas of Mumbai have actually joined together to create a, a little union of sorts to try to get the government of India, the city government of Mumbai, to help create bike lanes so that these, can, these guys can actually have cycle clubs and, and do recreational sporting activities. This is actually taking off, and it's uh, led by a couple of people. Amit Bhomik is one of them, who is the founder of India's first social network for cyclists, <laughs> which I love, the idea of promoting recreational uh, exercise, but getting the city to pay attention to basic needs, right? And this is a good one. So I love this story. By the way, folks, if you have a bike, let's say that you've had a bike in your garage and you're not using it, hasn't been sitting around forever and ever, what do you do with it? You can always get rid of it. But here's something you can do. This was a great article out of the Washington Post about a, uh, an organization called Bikes for the World. They're an Arlington nonprofit group here in the Washington, D.C. area. They'll come up and take your bike. 
they'll take it from you basically, but where it ends up is the, is the cool part. They will take these bikes to Latin America and to Africa, to kids and to families that really need these bicycles, you know, not, not just as a way to, to have fun, but to get to school, to get groceries, uh, to live their lives better. And is that a non -profit? Thought, It's a non-profit, and yeah. uh, you can, again, the name of the group is Bikes for the World. You can find them online. There's more than one group that does this, but this was featured in the Washington Post, and I just love the idea of people you know, you outgrow bikes, your kids outgrow bikes. What do you do with them? This is one great way to make sure they go towards a really, really good cause. What happens when a new technology comes up and your old gadget <laughs> becomes all of a sudden old and you need to get rid of it? Well, the Best Buy and the Walmart thought of this and they say, you know what, we'll sell you insurance. We'll charge you $50 for a phone. For instance, iPhone. You know that uh, come October, November, there's going to be a new iPhone. Now, say suppose you bought one this January, and all of a sudden, in November, you're going to be out of technology. You know, yeah, you're going to be behind. <laughs> now, you paid $500 for it. So what do you do with it? So they're saying, well, we'll sell insurance, $50 you pay up front. And then when you're ready to say, okay, I want the new one, no problem. We'll it's give you crazy. half the money, half the money for your old iPhone and we'll put you in the new iPhone, which is just like the way the cars, you know, your car salespeople, they, oh, you got a used car? Sure, we'll buy that, and, you know. And everybody is, you know, they're critics for this. They think this is really a ripoff. First of all, people will pay $50, 50 insurance and never come back. Well, they're going to keep this extra money. And that's what happened with those coupon deal that's too. Right. You know, you pay. Everything's uh, a racket. Yeah. <laughs> so they're thinking this is a racket. But for a real person who's a real technology phobic, you know, oh well, yeah, this is a good thing for him. At least he'll get some money out of it. And he doesn't have to worry how to get rid of his uh, equipment, you know. And uh, he can't throw it because it hurts, you know. So this is a good idea. So I like the idea of the bicycles as well. Folks, if you are tennis fans, then no doubt you will be familiar with the name Sanya Mirza. She is a rising star out of India in the world of tennis. She was in the news a lot a couple of years ago because she married a cricket player from Pakistan. And, of course, both countries, you know, were upset at the idea of them getting married. So they moved to Dubai, yeah. <laughs> which is great. Well, she was here in our area, uh, in the Washington, D.C. area, for the City Open Final in College Park. We had a chance to catch up with her, and so here she is in her own words. I'm really excited, uh, you know, to be here. We went, we went into the city, um, you know, a couple of days ago, and you always hear about the White House. That's the first thing that comes to mind. So, of course, we were really excited to come and play here. And uh, it's been really hot last, uh, you know, one week or so. But thank God I'm Indian, and I'm a bit more <laughs> used to it. Um, you know, we have a huge Indian American community here in the Washington area, and um, I know that coming here for the first time, there are a lot of Indian little girls who have the opportunity to play tennis here. What is your message to the